Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, brings in the Feast of Tabernacles. What does that say? I mean, it's similar to another, another thing that happens in the Hebrew year earlier in the spring. You've got Passover that brings in Shavuot, which is also called Pentecost. What do they have in common? Passover and Yom Kippur. They both center on the sacrifice. The celebration, the greatest celebration, comes at the end of the year. So what it's telling God's people is that for you, God saves the best for last. And if you're growing in the Lord and living in the Spirit, you are moving to the best. The joy always comes at the end. In the world, the joy might come in the beginning and then it goes, it fades away. But with God, the joy, the celebration is what we're, everything is heading to joy and celebration. So we are gonna do what is done, what was done right there as if you were in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago with Messiah. We're gonna have the waving of the branches or the lula. So you all have one of the three branches that the Bible just spoke about in that, in that scripture. And this is called the lulav. The lulav is, are the three branches that God spoke about. It says, you will take, you will take the palm. Well, actually this is, this is what represents. He said, he spoke about three descriptions. They are three here. One, one is the myrtle. You don't have that, but the myrtle is right here. The myrtle grows on the high places, on the mountains. And so it reminded them of the high places in their journey in the wilderness, also the rocky places, that God was with them. And then they had the willows, the willows of the brook, which reminded them they, it grows by the, the brooks and where the streams it reminded them that even with the, in the dryness of the desert, God gave them water in their dry times. And then you have the palm, which you have. The palm grows in the valley. And the valley reminded them that when they were even in the valleys of the wilderness, God never left them, he was with them in all those journeys. And what this reminds us about is that in your life, we are all journeying. If you're a believer, you are on a journey, you're not home. This whole world is again camping. And so we are in this journey to our home. And while we're in the journey on the Feast of Tabernacles, it reminds us that God is with you and never leaves you. And so the myrtle reminds us that in your joys and blessings, God was there. In your rocky times of your life, God was with you. In the willow reminds us in the driest times of your life, God gave you water streams in the desert. And the palm, God is telling us that in your valleys of your life, in the lowest places, lowest times, God never left you. He was always there. And then you have the fruit or the etrog or the citron, which is from the promised land, which is the fruit of the promised land. And what this reminds us, tells us is that this is a, the symbol of the promised land that we are heading to the promised land. That a land that of all the blessings where there is no lack and no deserts and no dryness, this is where we are heading to the promised land with God. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the biblical wave. We're gonna wave them to the four corners of the earth and proclaim that the Lord is king over all. And we raise the branches to heaven and we declare the Lord is the Lord of heaven. And heaven, he says, is my throne. And he's over everything. And we now to the ground. And we declare the earth, that the Lord is Lord over the earth. The earth is his footstool. And bring the branch now toward yourself. And Lord, we declare that you are Lord over this life. You are Lord over us, over me, over each of us. And everything in our life shall be under you. And we declare, we praise you, you are Lord of heaven and earth, and we thank you 
for being with us in our journey and that you never left us and never forsook us lord and you never will help us to journey with our eyes on the promised land help us to journey with our eyes on heaven lord and to journey with the joy of the lord because the lord is in our tents in the name of yeshua jesus and all his people say everybody open up your bibles open up to leviticus which is where we are leviticus 23 which is the the ordinance of the all the holy days of god but before we get into it let me just tell you share something uh, some of you know but many do not what happened to me when i was a new believer and i ventured for the first day into a church um, and i say church I mean, it, it's with a small C there because it's hard to say exactly what it was. It was a house, a little house and, and we were invited, me and my, my two friends who just came to the Lord, and uh, it was a house of three. Uh, it was, there was six people in this church. We were three more, so it made nine. Three of them were ministering to the other three. Uh, it was a father, a son, and a, and, a, and a mother, the mother, and they were all from the deep south, and they were preaching uh, for like for, at us for like four hours and we couldn't go anywhere because we were half the congregation and so we were you know and it was just of south and talking about communism and all we're just like you know and you know and uh, well, I just remember at one point a guy I remember the guy was a son he got out and he said he said in heaven we're gonna be able to eat as much as we want and and my friend is overweight and he went up to him and said you're gonna like that aren't you and he was like and so we're just praying, Lord, end this, please, you know, and God bless them. But, you know, but at the end, it didn't happen that way. At the end, they said, okay, who needs to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? There's nine people in the room. Three are preaching. Three were already there. They all turn around and look at us. And we're, we're trying not to be seen, but you can't really do that in that situation. And they said, okay, here's what you need to do. You need to get down on your knees. Close your eyes. Get down and receive and lift up your hands. Okay, so we, we, okay, we're closing our eyes. We live up. And also we hear all this noise and stamping and stamping and stamping and people shouting and, and we're just closing our eyes tighter, you know, and, and we don't know what's going on. I felt like the little rascals when they played hooky and they got into trouble. That's what I felt like. And, 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 and you know, and we're doing this and he comes up to me and, and he says, Mr., he says, says, he says, receive, you know, and I feel this boom hit on my head. And, I, and he says, receive it. He says, and talk. He said, no, no. I said, what do you want me? He said, no, another language talk. And I, again, boom, boom. And I don't know what to do. So finally, I just start, I just start, I said, Hava Nagila. He says, yes, 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 you got it. <laughs> then he goes to my friend and it peaked, and boom, my friend. And my friend is like, you know, I have three friends and my friend is like playing, oh, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Bring me home. <laughs> And, and, you know, we didn't get anything except, except dislocated neck, you know. And, and they meant, well, you know, but we're going to talk about the Spirit now. And verse 39, on, the, on exactly the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the crops of your land, you shall celebrate the feast of the Lord for seven days. With a rest on the first day, rest on the eighth day. Now on the first day you will take for yourself the leaves the, of beautiful trees, palm branches, boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You will thus celebrate it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It will be a continuous ordinance throughout your generations. You will celebrate it in the seventh month. You will live in tabernacles for seven days. All the native born in Israel shall live in tabernacles so that your generation may know. I had the children of Israel living in tabernacles when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses declared to the children of Israel the appointed times of the Lord. Because this was the last one. So it says now it sums up the whole thing. Feast of Tabernacles comes at the end. We just saw that during this feast was the water drawing ceremony where they would remember the waters that God gave them in the wilderness as they would, they would go down, again, the pool of Siloam, pour out the water on the, on the altar in the temple mount, and they would also pray for rain to come. You see, because there's about to come into the time of 
the plowing and the, the sowing of seeds. They just finished the harvest. So now they're beginning for the next one. They, they, sow, they plow the land, they sow the seeds, and then they need rain. And it's the rainy season that's supposed to come. They need rain to, so they can have fruit. Without rain, there's no fruit. Israel was a land without many rivers. It was dependent on the, the rain from heaven. So they had that whole ceremony. It says, and they recited and enjoy what we just saw. You shall draw waters from the wells of salvation or Yeshua. But water in the, in the scripture is a symbol of something else. It is a symbol of the Spirit of God. Even in one of those scriptures, I will pour, it says it will pour water and the rains, the latter rains, the former rains, the latter rains, but then it says I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. So the water is a symbol of the Spirit. Water gives life. The Spirit gives life. Water comes down from heaven. The Spirit is poured out from heaven. Water turns deserts into garden. The spirits make barren lives into blossoming lives. So here this is a symbol and they would pray for the Spirit. I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. So one of the mysteries of the Feast of Tabernacles is gives us revelation into the Spirit and the Spirit filled life. It's all about Feast of Tabernacles about fruit celebrating the promised land but you can't have it without the rain. In the same way God calls you to bear fruit, the fruit of repentance, the fruit of love, the fruit of peace, the fruit of joy, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of your calling, everything God calls from your life is fruit. And you might be trying, you are trying to produce fruit, those fruits of righteousness, but what the Feast of Tabernacles says, if you want to produce a fruit of God that He's called you to produce, you need rain. You need the pouring of the Spirit or you cannot produce the fruit because there's no fruit without water. There is no fruit of the Lord without the Spirit. What are those fruits called? Fruits of the Spirit. There is no righteousness without the Spirit of God. There's no real love without the Spirit of God. You cannot force fruits. You can't create fruit. You can't manufacture fruit. The rain gives the fruit. The Spirit gives you the fruits of God. I don't care what your denomination is, whether you're Pentecostal, I mean what you were raised as, Pentecostal, Baptist, it doesn't matter. We all need the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God brings all things into the will of God. If you're filled by the Spirit, if you move by the Spirit, you will do everything you need to do for God. You will fulfill the calling that God has and you'll become what God has called you to become. The Feast of Tabernacles comes after Yom Kippur. We're going to open up these revelations of the Spirit. It comes after Yom Kippur. That's not an accident. It's got to be that way. Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, brings in the Feast of Tabernacles. What does that say? I mean, it's similar to another, another thing that happens in the Hebrew year earlier in the spring. You've got Passover that brings in Shavuot, which is also called Pentecost. What do they have in common? Passover and Yom Kippur. They both center on the sacrifice. The Passover more than anything centers on the Passover sacrifice. Yom Kippur centers on the Yom Kippur sacrifice, atonement. The key is the sacrifice. The sacrifice brings in the Spirit, brings in the pouring. Passover brings in Pentecost. Yom Kippur ushers in tabernacles. The water drawing, you know what would happen is the priest we said would go up onto the Temple Mount and pour out the water, pour out the water on the altar. There's nothing here, but it's symbolic, spirit, okay? On the altar. What is that saying? The spirit and the altar go together. The altar is the sacrifice. The sacrifice is linked to the spirit. It's no accident that the book of Acts, spirit, coming of the spirit and Acts comes when? right after the crucifixion and the resurrection. After the Acts follows the Gospel. You got to have the Gospel first, then you can have Acts. The Spirit comes after the sacrifice of Messiah. And it opened, it, it's the sacrifice that opens it up. You cannot have Pentecost without the crucifixion. And so the, the priest pours it out. A lot of people believe the, the, the way to live in the Spirit, a Spirit-filled life, is to focus on the Spirit. Focus on the gifts. Focus on the moving. Focus on, 
Some people try to speak in tongues. Some people believe that it's, that, that's, it's by getting zapped and hit on the head or, or other ways it comes and their focus is that. But that's not the focus of our faith. The focus of our faith is the death and resurrection of Messiah. The grace of God poured out on Calvary and then comes the Spirit. It's not one without the other, but one is first. Is it, you can't say, well, I, you know, there are those of the, you know, they deny the Spirit. That's just as off base. But if you're focusing everything on the gifts of the Spirit, the moving of the Spirit, there's something not right. You're supposed to be focusing on Him, on Messiah, on, the, on your salvation. In that then comes the Spirit. Living in the Spirit, but focusing on the, the, the price that was paid for you and the love of God, that was the amazing grace of God that saved a wretch like us. And so you, you need to first, you want to live a spirit for the life, ground your heart and ground your emotions on the, the love, on everything in your life, on the, the, your salvation, the cross, the love of God for you. Get that into every part of your life and you're going to be open to all that the Spirit has for you. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.